Hi, I'm Carl from OSP, and this is Communicate, Connect, Grow, the OSP podcast. On today's episode, we're talking about identifying your audience in your writing with the editing code WHOM about our podcast. If you want to be a more effective writer, a more transparent editor, develop clear strategic thinking, or learn from our network of expert friends and colleagues, that's what we're here for. We divide our episodes across three themes, communicate, connect, and grow. This is a communicate episode, and we're talking about identifying your audience up front with our editorial code, WHOM. The Whom Editing Code falls into the scope and narrative structure phase of the editing process, and it's about being clear who you are writing for. In our documentation about this code, it says, identify your audience explicitly or implicitly to help readers self-select and identify with the content or not. Back with my pandemic hair, this is Jeffrey A. McGuire. I'm a co-founder at Open Strategy Partners. The Whom code, like so many of our codes, is very granular and simple and gets to a specific point. And that granularity and that specificity helps us as editors be very clear and specific in how we can teach and pass on our opinions in an objective way. Whom is simply know your audience. When you're looking at a piece of writing, when you're writing a piece of writing, when you're helping someone else improve it, it's really important to know who the intended audience is. Because we essentially work in a marketing context, we can think about our target audiences, our target personas, and then from there flows a lot of our work. I think this counts, though, if you're writing an email to a relative, if you are writing a speech to give at some alumni event, whatever it is, knowing who your audience is can really help you choose the right word. As a practical tip in our work creating strategic communication, when you are writing the beginning of a piece, when you are writing the opening paragraph, when you are writing the meta title and meta description for something that you're publishing on your website, identify explicitly or implicitly who that article is for. And this is yet another trick to help readers decide whether to dive into your piece or whether they should self-select and go find something else. And I'd really, really rather someone read something that they're interested in. So an example of that would be teams delivering client sites often face such and so, and then we know we're talking about web developers. Another example of implying whom you're addressing is, is a sentence like managing large clusters of servers. It could be the same if we were talking about lawnmowers or grass or, or home tips, you know, I'm Christine Bueller, and I am a communication consultant at Open Strategy Partners. And every day I work with our clients on blog posts, landing pages, pretty much all types of marketing communication. So the WHOM editing code, which is W H O M, just means you are identifying your audience at the very beginning of a piece of writing, just so it's clear to a reader right from the beginning who you are addressing and if that piece of writing applies to them or not. G'day, my name is Felicity Brandt. I am a communications consultant at Open Strategy Partners. The whom editing code, it's not a grammar issue. It's about clearly identifying who your reader is at the start of a piece of content. So whether you identify them implicitly or explicitly, you're basically just stating who you're writing for in the opening. The whom code is important because these days there's a ton of content So it's really important to be upfront and clear who you're writing for at the start to help your readers self-select, like self-identify that this piece of writing is for them. Equally, they can self-exclude, you know, they can choose to uh, spend their attention elsewhere. And it just means that if you really nail that whom you reach your target audience that much sooner, 
So it's about clarity and respecting your audience so that they can um, empower themselves to keep reading or go elsewhere. As part of the editing process, here's how this code could be used. When I'm working as an editor, the concept of whom comes up first and foremost in how the beginning and any calls to action and the closing are formulated so that people are very, very clear on whether this piece of work might be for them. As I'm going through, I think this, the idea of knowing your target audience is important and it helps us remember if we're going to use a technical term or some industry jargon, at what level we might explain something. It might help us decide the level of formality in our writing. A great example from our work is, is it focused on economic terms and budget and planning results, or is it focused on implementations and technical details? If it starts to get really mixed, I think probably we're not clear on who a given article is for. So a lot goes in there uh, when you when you look at it in, in the sort of extended way. As an editor, and I'm looking for whom right at the beginning, because it helps me to understand what the rest of the piece is about. And, you know, once I read it and I understand it, I'm like, okay, the rest of this piece should be pretty clear to me. Usually I just go through and I make sure that it's consistent. You know, if we're speaking to marketers, we're going to emphasize different parts of a CMS. You know, we're going to talk about the front end versus if we're talking to developers, we're going to go talk about the back end. Usually just making sure that throughout the entire piece, it's consistent. When I'm looking at whom as an editor, I will look to the brief. So every piece of content that we write at OSP has a brief. And in the brief, we stipulate who the audience is. And so then as an editor, I'm being a reader advocate. I put myself in the audience's shoes and see if I feel directly spoken to right from the start. And then we need to make sure it's consistent throughout. If I notice that the content maybe starts to address other audiences, then I'll make a note to the writer to, you know, maybe we consider splitting that into two. Or, you know, maybe there's room for um, to write another piece targeting a different audience. Or perhaps we can broaden the scope of the whole piece, basically kind of restating whom to target a broader, a broader group. Understanding who you're writing for and, and making sure that that piece of content is talking to who we said we were trying to talk to. Now let's explore why this code is handy as a writer. When I'm drafting a piece, when I'm the writer, I may or may not have created the brief and the outline for that piece. In any case, I need to refresh my memory, figure out, okay, this is for project managers in large organizations who face X and Y. This is for senior leaders to understand and defend the business value of their choice of open software. This is whatever. Keeping that in mind, our kind of storytelling is often to give someone a story that they can pass on to someone else. So I want to help them learn, understand, and then later express the value in something that they do or something that they care about so that maybe they can convince somebody else. So I want to give that person the kind of story that they're comfortable telling and that they might find easier to remember. When I'm writing a piece of content I am thinking of the whom editing code from the very beginning. One of the first things I do when I'm drafting a piece is I identify the audience to myself and, you know, make sure that I'm identifying it in the piece of writing because it influences the entire rest of the piece. As a writer, when you're thinking about the whom code, that's driven from the brief. So you've already articulated who your audience is. So then when you come to write, there are a few different ways you can tackle whom. You can state your audience explicitly or implicitly. It doesn't have to be in the first sentence, but it should definitely be in the first paragraph. I think double points for getting it in the title. You really need to get whom clear as early as you can because that's just about respecting your readers. So an explicit example might be if you are writing a piece targeted at UX designers in your first sentence, you might say UX designers often have X challenge. An implicit example 
would be something a bit more like teams delivering client sites often. The reader in that example might self-identify as, yes, I work in a team that delivers client websites and they may choose to continue reading. This writing code is very beneficial to readers for many reasons. In our sort of mission to respect our readers, we want people to very quickly understand how they might benefit from something and what challenges a given solution addresses, and how we or the, what we're writing about might solve and address those challenges. For example, we, we have a lot of client work in the CMS space, in content management, and it really, really helps then to say, am I talking with a web developer? Am I talking with a front-end or a back-end developer? Am I talking to a potential client or a marketer or a content team? Some technology articles might look too generic if you don't identify right up front who needs this and why they need it, right? So if you're managing a large fleet of surfers, if you need to generate multilingual content, if you, whatever it is, that'll help these people identify their challenge and then they'll know that they could gain something by reading it. Well, with a lot of our editing codes, I think whom is about respecting the reader's time because when we're making it clear right at the beginning of a piece of writing if it's for them or it's not and if it's for them great then they keep reading but we're giving them the chance right away to be like oh okay yes this piece is speaking to me and it could be useful. So I'm going to keep reading. And if it's not, they can go and hopefully read something else we've written. So as a reader, whom is really important? There's a ton of content on the internet and a, a clear whom, clearly stating the audience, means that as a reader, you're going to feel a direct connection with the content straight away. And you'll be confident that the information presented to you is relevant for you. And that means that you can trust that investing your time in reading or consuming that content is going to be time well spent. By being clear who you're writing for, you are establishing this bond of trust that as the writer, I'm writing this content for you, the reader. And then as the reader, you're reading that thinking, yes, this is written for me, it's relevant to me, and it's providing content that's useful to me. I think the whom editing code is one of our most useful codes. Sometimes when I am reading other writing that's not by OSP, I notice that I don't know who this is supposed to be talking to. I think it's really, it's really useful, and I'm glad we have it. I hope you, dear listener, confidently self-selected listening to this episode and that we managed to share some relevant content with you. Next time you start creating a piece of content, think about who it's aimed at and make sure you address them right up front. Share your examples or questions with us via Twitter at open underscore strategy or email hello at openstrategypartners.com. This was one of the editorial codes we use at OSP. If you'd like to learn more in the meantime, come on over to OpenStrategyPartners.com. Have a look on our writer enablement workshops, case study offering, or get in touch to talk about your strategy or product communication needs. Thanks to everyone who contributed to this podcast, all the P's at OSP. Thanks to our clients who believe in us. Shout out to Patrick Gaumont for our high energy maple syrup flavored theme music and to Mike Snow for additional horn arrangements. Thank you for listening and subscribing. About our three themes on the podcast, you'll hear different members of the OSP team hosting episodes over time. Communicate. All things communication. We share how we tackle writing, editing, word choices, formats, processes, and more. Connect. In-depth conversations with interesting smart people about who they are, what they do, and how they approach their life and work as communicators, technologists, and leaders. 
grow. We cover approaches to understanding and expressing the value of what you do, including tools, templates, and practical applications. We also feel strongly about building a mindful, positive, human-first culture at work. That's bound to pop up from time to time, too. This podcast is us figuring out communication, connection, and growing together. Subscribe now on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or the podcast channel of your choice. Follow us, suggest guests and topics, ask us questions on social media. We are at open underscore strategy on Twitter. Until next time, I'm Carl Richards, and this is the OSP Podcast. When looking for a left-handed hammer, this is what's important to remember. That kind of thing.